bro. Happy Sabbath. All right. All praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. The name of his anointed son, Yahweh Shah of Nazareth, that sit upon the throne at the right hand side of the Most High. All right. So, we'll get into this topic pertaining to into Ephesians 4 the topic is he gave some apostles, pastors, and teachers for the edifying of the body of Christ. Okay. We're going to get into it. Deal with the church, the structure, how we're supposed to be getting fed, edified, get ourselves in order. Okay, as, as the Lord's people, the children of Israel. So we'll start Ephesians 4 and 11. So who wants to read? All right. Ephesians 4 and 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Right. So Paul here is explaining to these Israelites in Ephesus how that Christ... Once he ascended back to the Father, he gave gifts unto men. And these brothers here, they couldn't be envious of one another. They couldn't be covetous. Their job was to feed the church. Okay? So we have to be clear, Israel. When you look at the righteous men of Israel, they wasn't eager to lead. You understand? The Lord had his men chosen. These men weren't eager to lead people like that, jumping out there. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll lead. No, they were humble. And that's what gave them ability. You see? And they didn't take or think much of themselves. In Israel, for a lot of us, we'd be thinking too much of ourselves and think, I, you know, I should be doing this. Or I should. <coughs> Hold on. We have to humble ourselves. Men that came like that in our history, they was infamous. Israelites was getting themselves destroyed. So let's get that. Let's go to 1 Maccabees in the Apocrypha, which we always say the Apocrypha can be found in the 1611 edition of the King James Version of the Bible. So 1 Maccabees, and we'll come back to Ephesians. 1 Maccabees 5 mm -hmm. and 16. So a, a carnal man is the one that's going to be eager to lead, jump, put himself out there, and they're going to make, they'll be about making too much of themselves. You understand? So 1 Maccabees 5 and 16. It says, now when Judas and the people heard these words. So this is the time when the nations, when you start in the first verse of the fifth chapter, the nations had gathered themselves together to destroy our nation, the children of Israel, because they had heard that we had rebuilt, rebuilt or rededicated the altar and the temple back to the Most High, which the heathen, so-called European, had destroyed. So once we had got, built the altar in righteousness, rededicated the temple the heathen got mad so now you read about Judas a brother that was wise and he knew the battlefield did he not yes he did he knew the battlefield his father knew him about his sons and the gifts that they had see so we bring out this brother Judas right here he had a gift he knew the battlefield he was wise and this type of brother was there to profit Israel not to hinder Israel. See what I'm saying? This is a man that you read about, he wasn't covetous. He put himself on the line, right? It wasn't about conformity. He wasn't worldly. See? Read on. It says, uh, Now when Judas and the people heard these words, there assembled a great congregation together to consult what they should do for their brethren that were in trouble and assaulted of them. Right, so the, the Judah's brethren, which these were, these were other Israelites, were getting affected by the nations. So now Judas got together with his blood brothers and some Israelites 
And they did what? They held a council. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they held a council, it was for what? For the benefit of their people. You understand? Read on. 17. Then said Judas unto Simon. Then said Judas unto who? Simon. Simon. His brother. No, his brother, mean blood brother. So what's the makeup of Simon? Simon was a man of counsel. Right. You understand? A man of wisdom. So we're making these points because you just can't read it as a storybook. Nah, it breaks down these men's character. Simon was a wise man, right? A counselor. Go ahead. It says, so choose thee out men and go and deliver thy brethren that are in Galilee. For I and Jonathan, my brother, will go into the country of Gilead. Mm -hmm. So he left Joseph, the son of Zacharias and Azariah. So he left two brothers named Joseph and Azariah. Go ahead. Captains of the people with the remnant of the host. Meaning of he left them, those two, with the remnant of the Israelites, the host, the army. Go ahead. With the host of Judea to keep it. To do what? To keep it. To keep it means to protect that remnant. Okay, go ahead. Unto whom he gave commandment, saying, Take ye charge of this people. Take ye charge of this remnant of Israel. Go ahead. And see that ye make not war against the heathen until the time that we come again. So they, Judas them gave them a straight commandment. You two brothers, don't go make war with the heathen. You look out for the rest of your people that's with you. Don't go make war till we come back. Right? Right. So verse 55 in the same chapter. First Maccabees 5, and we're jumping over to verse 55. Now what time as Judas and Jonathan were in the land of Gilead, and Simon his brethren in Galilee before Ptolemaeus, Joseph the son of Zacharias and Azarias, captains of the garrison, heard of the valiant acts and warlike deeds which they had done. So these two brothers got wind of what Judas and his blood brother had done amongst the heathen, how they did and performed warlike, valiant acts. So they got these two got wind of that. Go ahead. Wherefore, they said, let us also get us a name. So what's the problem with these two brothers and their thought process? Envy. Envy. Covetous. Covetous. These men. They desire vain glory. Vain glory. They want to be somebody. Yes, sir. They self will. You understand? So they like, let us get a name. Is that the spirit? No. That's not the spirit right there. This is all the flesh. So let's read on. It says, verse in the middle of 57, and go fight against the heathen that are round about us. So when they had given charge unto the garrison that was with them, they went toward Jamnia. Then came Georgias and his men out of that city to fight against them. And so it was that Joseph and Azarias were put to flight and pursued unto the borders of Judea. So these brothers, these two brothers right here, thought they were somebody. They get out there on the battlefield and they end up what? Running. Getting they butt whooped, they running. Because it wasn't of the Lord. You see that? These men were carnal. They sought vainglory, they wanted to be somebody in Israel. That's not the spirit, that's dangerous. That's the same spirit Korah and Dathan and all them had on them. Covetous. Wanting the high priesthood. What happened? Lord swallowed them up, like, right? Earth opened up her mouth, wham! took them and their families. So that's that's no joke right there. That's a dangerous spirit to have. You had brothers that left, come with that spirit. We built this, we helped. I'm a teacher. I'm this, I'm that. Split. I'm a deacon. I'm that. <laughs> split. Don't take my deaconship. Split. See that? I want that mic to teach this, this, and that split. Coveting, teaching. That's out of order. 
That's not the spirit. And if we walk in that spirit, that's the spirit that's dangerous that will have us split. Because that brother want to do his own thing. Here for the wrong reasons. Remember, we went through various scriptures pertaining to how the Holy Spirit operates. 1 Corinthians 12. Romans, uh, uh, the 12th chapter. See? So we have to be careful, Israel. We have to be careful. And it's not the Spirit. None of us should be a... Yeah, my gift is this. My gift is that. My gift. Listen, we got to do the job and humble ourselves. That's the best thing. Humility before honor. You got all these men covered in rank. Look at these camps. Covered in rank, right? Power. Covered listening. <laughs> covered learning. <laughs> See? Covet charity. We be looking at the wrong things, Israel. We have to humble ourselves and listen. Listen, we got to get ourselves in order. We're here to repent. This class is about all of us. So let's kill that noise real quick. <laughs> we have to humble ourselves and covet listening and learning. It's the Sabbath day. We supposed to be prepared, ready, right? right. Refreshed. We come in here. Who are you doing last night? See what I'm saying? Doing too much. Can't sleep in. That's what the Sabbath service is for. Is that what the Sabbath is about? We come to the service and no, no. No. Tell us, tell us in Exodus 23, right, about the Sabbath, when we're supposed to be refreshed. Come to learn. See? So these men are way out of order. Read on, brother. All right. It says, I'll read it again if you don't mind. Go ahead. Uh, verse 60. And so it was that Joseph and Azarias were put to flight and pursued unto the borders of Judea. And there were slain that day of the people of Israel about 2,000 men. Look how many Israelites died. 2,000 brothers. Now their job was to protect and look out for that remnant, right? So how did 2,000 men die? Because the selfishness and covetousness of Joseph and Azariah being out of pocket. Let us get us a name. Selfishness, covetousness. And let's put everybody else in jeopardy. Hmm. And they end up getting out there running on the battlefield. See, that they wasn't being spiritual, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Verse 61, Maccabees 5. Thus was there a great overthrow among the children of Israel, because they were not obedient unto Judas and his brethren, but thought to do some valiant act. See, so they, they made too much of themselves. See that? So the thinking was not right. Go ahead. 62. Moreover, these men came not of the seed of those, but whose hand deliverance was given unto Israel. And moreover, these men came not of the seed of those, by whose hand deliverance was given unto Israel. See, the Lord had... Judas and his family there to help deliver Israel. There's certain times where, you know, one brother died, then another brother rise up. That brother died, another brother rise up. The father, he was set the tone in the house. See that? So that go to show you the Lord picks his men. You understand? So jump down, verse 67. All right, 1 Maccabees 5 and 67 verse. At, this, at that time, certain priests desires to show their valor were slain in battle. For they that went out to fight. R read it again. Okay. At that time, certain priests desires to show their valor were slain in battle. For that they went out 
to fight unadvisedly. You see that? So you got another group of Israelites going out on the battlefield unadvisedly. Got themselves in trouble. All this was due to covetousness. Men not having the spirit. So that's why we saying, with the Lord bringing out them gifts unto men, with his apostles, teachers, pastors, the Lord giving them these gifts to edify the body of Christ. And these men couldn't be covetous. They couldn't be envious. We're going to get that scripture. Go to Exodus 18. You see? So you got men out there as we speak out there lead Israel astray, calling themselves leaders. Teaching wrong doctrines, devil doctrines. Giving out some supposed rank. See that? Under Christ, we ain't under the, we're supposed to be under no ranks. <laughs> A ranking system and you get your rank, brother, when you take this test and pass the test. Right. Now you are the captain of, of 5,000 because of a test. That's carnal. That's carnal right there. And then these men, power hungry, dealing with their people off. Dealing with their people off, brother. Because they're covetous. They ain't going to charge you a Bible for $75 and that's some foolishness. Covetous men. Leading our people astray. This is serious, Israel. We're not supposed to be seeking vain glory. Putting brothers in a bind off some question that's loaded. That's not the spirit. Okay? So we got to get this thing right. We got to get it right and we got to be here to learn. Learn the scriptures, stay humble, and we'll be straight. The minute we start rising up, I'm somebody, this, that's dangerous. We got to watch that. We're going to find ourselves out of here and pissed all the time because we think we should be somebody because we've been here so long. That's what you call leaven and pride. You see? Exodus 18. Exodus 18. In eight. Exodus, the 18th chapter and the 8th verse. And Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done unto Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake. For whose sake? For Israel's sake. See that? So the Lord jacked up the Egyptians with ten plagues. Why? For, for Israel's, Israel's sake. Because Israel, the 12 tribes, is the Lord's chosen people. Period. Go ahead. And all the travail that had come upon them by the way, and how the Lord delivered them. And Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness which the Lord had done to Israel, whom he had delivered out of the hand of the Egyptians. So Jethro was Moses' father-in-law, Midianite. So Jethro is hearing about how the, the Lord, the power of Israel, had delivered our nation Right? From under the hands of the Egyptians and Jethro is rejoicing. You see? Jethro understand that Moses' God is the God of the Hebrews, the children of Israel. He understands that. Read on. 10. And Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord who hath delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh who hath delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods, for in, these, for in the things wherein they dwelt proudly, he was above them. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrificed to the Most High, or for the Most High. Right. And Aaron came, and all the elders of Israel, to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before the Most High. And it came to pass on the morrow, that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood before Moses from the morning until the evening. See, so Israel would be standing before Moses all day. 
from morning to evening. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, 14. And when Moses' is, when Moses' is father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone, and all the people stand by thee from morning unto evening? And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of the Most High. 16. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another, and I do. Make them to know stat statues. Make them to know the statues of God and His laws. Right. So they're going to show you right there, Israel, that there was commandments around before Exodus 19, before the Most High came and spoke to our nation. Israel was hearing commandments, right or wrong. Right. They knew about the Sabbath. Exodus 16, Moses started getting into the Sabbath day. The Sabbath go all the way back to creation. So wisdom been around since the beginning. So Moses by himself at one point in time will be, be dealing with the issues of Israel all day long. So Jethro, that caught his attention. He's like, what are you doing? Say, go ahead. 17, chapter 18 in Exodus. And Moses, his father-in-law, said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away, both thou and this people that is with thee. For this thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and the Most High shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Godward, that thou mayest bring the causes unto the Most High. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk. And the work that they must do. See, so Moses' job would be to teach the Israelites, right? Right. Right? So right. also, Moses would need help. No. Okay? So Moses just couldn't get any old guy. Right? Right. So read on. 21. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men. So what will make these Israelites able? What would they have the ability to do? The answer is in the 20th verse. First, they would be getting taught by Moses, right? And they'd be able to relay the same things down to Israel. They'd be able to go in them scriptures and show Israel just laws, just commandments, and teach them, right? Show them the way. They couldn't come with their own opinion. They had to know the law. Because these men also would be judges out the gates and they had they had to be had that ability to show Israel those scriptures man wasn't no lollygagging with these brothers they couldn't be simpletons and playing games and all that stuff and they know nothing they had to be in, in the word you understand and judge matters you see now how they gonna judge matters that ain't in the word like they should be that ability no. It's an able men, go ahead. Such as fear the most high. Such as what? Fear the most high. Right. So what was up with Zacharias or what are uh, Joseph and Azarias? They had a fear of God? No, no. No, that's why they stepped out there. <laughs> Without the fear of God. So these men if Moses would have to deal with, they had to have that reverence and fear for God's commandments. They would tremble at the word. Right or wrong? Right. Okay. Go ahead. It says, men of truth. Men of what? Men of truth. So then could they be false brothers? No. No. Nah. So we had some of that. False brothers, and then what happened? Split, no, then work. Not the spirit. You see? You can't just pick and choose who you want like this. That's not going to work. got to be in the spirit, and the spirit manifests things. We went over those classes. The spirit manifests who's what need to do this, 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 and that. Not, let me roll on you, brother, and tell you what I can... No, no, no. That's that spirit of wanting to be somebody. That's not going to work, Israel. 
We just seen men like that want to be somebody, and we see an example. Where are they? We look past that. Not me. We looking past the wrong. We got to look and see the examples. We got to see what's going on. Pay attention. We get easily distracted too quick. We're going to get into those scriptures as a church. We get distracted. We got to come with the right mind frame, Israel. The mind frame to learn, zip it, humble ourselves, and we'll be good. Now I'm somebody. We're nobody. We're vessels. Okay? And we're supposed to be here to help one another. And that's it, man. That's it. Help one another. Learn. Come. It's the Sabbath day. We gather. Thus said the Lord according to the law. And we get fed. See? So let's read on. Exodus 18, the bottom of 21. It says, hating covetousness. Say what? Hating covetousness. Loving covetousness. Hating covetousness. Pleased with covetousness. Hating covetousness. So these men are supposed to hate covetousness. Right? right. What was up with them two brothers that we read about in 1 Maccabees? Did they hate covetousness? It was no. <coughs> so what is covetousness? Idolatry. It's idolatry. So what does covetousness look like? Envy, jealousy, presumptuous, self-will. Right. I want what you got. Desire to have things that you don't have. You right. right? See? And if we know we're dealing with that issue for a lot of us, then we need to chill back and say, hold on, I get myself together. You see? That's the spirit. Let me learn. I don't know as I ought to know. I need to be learning these scripts. I'm not really in this book like I should be. We supposed to be true to ourselves, brother. The scripture tells us, let thy life be sincere. We can't be true with ourselves. How are we going to be true with one another? You see? We be lying to ourselves, deceiving ourselves. These men had to hate covetousness. They had to have, they had to be men of truth. They had wives, they had to deal with their wife and be men of truth. Not scared to correct them. <laughs> no, they were men of truth. Hating covetousness. They was they had ability to go and guide the house, get in them scriptures and teach. They couldn't go off their opinion. It's the true leaders, brother. They fit this category here. You understand? Continue. Bottom of 21. And place such. And place what? And place such. And place such. Mean these type of men, Moses. And place such. Go ahead. Over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. See, so under Moses, we had that ranking system. We're under Christ. We're under Christ. And it's amazing how the, these men, it's ironic, they go give out the ranks. And then go against the very scriptures right here where they see the ranking system. Where they're about covetousness. How you how you gonna put your daughters out there, your daughter, the daughters of Israel out there like this e harmony or something? That's how that's how I guess daughters goes down, Israel. <laughs> that's not a covetous spirit. And then you teaching other brothers to be covetous. Because now the sister telling her background, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, a thousand brothers. I want her, I want her. I... Way out of order. But you're going and using these scriptures, spinning them. See? And from that little ranking system comes chief high priest. Comforter. See that? <laughs> All these these titles, generals, captains, <laughs> and then it gets into man worship. You understand? Read on. Exodus eighteen twenty two, and let them judge the people 
at all seasons. See that? And let them what? Judge the people at all seasons. So these men would be judges in the gates. And how would they have to judge? According to the written word. The law, statutes, and commandments. They couldn't put the law to the side and then take bribes and all this other foolishness. Had to respect a person's spirit. <laughs> a brother that's a cherry picker. I like this scripture, but not that. <laughs> they had to come out the scriptures. You see? Go ahead. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden. And they shall, read it right, brother, they shall be the burden. And they shall bear the burden with thee. See that? So they couldn't be a burden to Moses, right? No. They was there to bear the burden, me a help. They to assist. We helpers. Lighten this thing up, because what nation are we dealing with? Israel. We're dealing with Israel. Stiff yeah, so you can't be a type of brother blow up, always blowing up. Nah. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of this. What nation are you dealing with? <laughs> How you ain't cool coming with prayer, fast, counsel. I just can't do So you okay then. Chill, chill. Relax. Pump them brakes 20,000, brother. Serious. Serious. Can't be out there on the street like, man, you a dummy. Stop, dummy. You right. can't be talking to your people, their brothers and sisters like that, man. Kuna lights. Two thirds. Like you had this wisdom since since you was born from the womb, coming from the womb. And a lot of that stuff they be saying ain't even wisdom. <laughs> See? So these brothers right here would be a help to Moses, not a hindrance. Rolling up on Moses and all that. You see what the Lord dealt did with Korah and David. The Lord said, I got something for them. And those things are written for our example. Why example? So we got to take it serious, General. And we got to watch what spirit be on us. See? Like the scriptures say, Satan be ready to take us out. Take us out at his will. See? Because he's a spirit, man. You ain't going to see him come with horns and a tail and all this. It's a spirit. A negative spirit, demonic spirit, devilish spirit. And that spirit jumps on man, a lot of Israelites, and they be filled with strife, contention, they miss the point, things go over their head, they not understanding, they camp hoppers, problem troublemakers. See? Can't be taught with Hebrew names, so called Hebrew names. And it's other books in Yiddish. <laughs> what they want to be teachers. And here they are, social media. Gone shooting scriptures. <laughs> Way out of order. Then a sister show her face. Hey, lovely. Con. <laughs> <laughs> out of control. Out of control. See that? So what the next verse say, brother? 23. If thou shalt do these, this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure it. And all this people shall also go to their place in peace. There it is. See? So that's the mission for us to go to our place, that kingdom, in peace. In peace. We got to deal with humility. So let's go back to Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, we'll read it again. Ephesians 4 and 11. So we want to get some of those scriptures to prove how these pastors and teachers, evangelists, they couldn't be envious of one another. They couldn't be covetous. You don't read about Peter, James, John, Paul, envious of one another's gift, covetous. See that? So 
4. Ephesians 4 and 11. We can read that. Ephesians 4 and 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. See, so again, these men would have to have a spirit. They couldn't get in the water and then come out the water and be, be like uh, Simon the sorcerer. Right. Hey, man, let, let's see Peter and them moving with that power. Let me buy some of that, that power. Covetous. Peter had to correct him. Brother, yo. Heart is wrong. In so many words, you need to repent for the thought of thy heart. He's out of control. Came out the water. Started seeing that power at work. He didn't understand the operation of the Holy Spirit. See? See? The Lord got his men, and in time, the Lord see fit and do what he want to do according to the Spirit. Nobody can say nothing because it's spiritual. It profits the whole body, man. You look for a pat on the back. You see me? They're not children. they children. Look, Daddy. Look, Mommy. They want attention. <laughs> see? You got to watch that spirit. So read on. Ephesians 4 and 12. For the perfecting of the saints. So what's the purpose that the Lord, Yahweh Shai, sent down the gifts when you have pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets, apostles, for what? For the perfecting of the saints. For the perfecting of the saints. So we coming up in the saints. The saints are the children of Israel that repent and follow the apostles' doctrine. And they seeking to put off the old man, the old woman. They ain't looking to move in bitterness and malice. They're kind. They're forgiving. See what I'm saying? They're not clamorous. You got brothers clamorous, man. Blow up on you, cuss you out, and attack you. Strikers. You got some of that on the street. They shouldn't be out there, but they're out there because those are Satan's angels. His ministers. <laughs> They got to repent, just like all of us. So we ain't here to condemn and down no brother or sister in Israel. But we got to let the scriptures go out. Okay? And if the shoe be fitting, then we got to all wear it. A lot of us been guilty of things. So we have to repent. Okay? Read on, brother. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Read that again. For the, perfect, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. For the edifying, for the edifying of the body of Christ. What does the word edify mean? To be enlightened or taught. Right. Enlightened, taught. So best to believe us in the body of Christ, we're supposed to be looking to be what? Taught. Taught. Edified. So when you, we coming together... We're supposed to be looking to get edified, not getting distracted, not coming up in here and sleep. You're missing the point. What was you doing last night? We're in the Sabbath. What was you doing last night? You need to check yourself. Too much. And you notice that spirit come up in here and it jumps. So the Lord was showing us something there. He ain't supposed to be in here. And then, wake up, yeah, Second Ezra 2, brother. <laughs> Quoting all these scripts. Here we go. He's like, where's the spirit come? What is the spirit? Yeah. Lord be showing us stuff. Don't, don't be like this. It's out of order. <laughs> we supposed to come to get edified and be attentive, Israel. You come in here and be eating and this, this, and that. And yeah getting out of order. We have to get into these scriptures. Children up, this and that. We got, you know, back in the day, Candy Crush. The word going out, how are you on Candy Crush? That means you, you're out of it. We got a partition. His sister. Gone, man. Coloring book. No, child... It's, it's, Mike can't read. You know, my Bible. We train them up in the way they should go, right? Child can come, sleep, not paying attention. So when you're at home going over scriptures, 
what the child doing? Shooting baskets? Why daddy and mommy going on the scripts and all that? What are you doing? Running around? They supposed to be in there. No, we get all taught. Conference class, the brother on there, wife and children, they in other places. How that one accord? Then when you tell the brother that, he mad. Traditions of men, I'm judging. Brother, you move in one accord with your family. Word going out. See, we've all been guilty, some of us, of that stuff. Okay? So go to Nehemiah 8 to show you the mind frame that they had. The mind frame that these brothers and sisters had, that's the mind frame we'd have. Nehemiah 8 and 1. So meditate, Israel, in these scriptures here. This is what keeps us safe. Nehemiah 8 and 1. It says, and Nehemiah the 8th chapter in the very first verse. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man in the street. So when it said they gathered as one man, man meaning what? On one accord. They is on one accord. Go ahead. It said, to gather themselves together as one man in the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. So these brothers and sisters gathered themselves together, being on one accord, and they seeking the word that the Most High had given to Moses to give unto our nation, the children of Israel. Go ahead. Verse 2. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women. Both of men and who? And women. And women. So sisters was there, apart. Right. So you got families there. Go ahead. And all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. Upon the first day of the seventh month, what feast would that be? The memorial blowing of the trumpets. That's a feast day, right? Mm -hmm. right? So on the feast day, would Israel get taught first and then eat? Yeah. Or just be, yeah. They don't even do that in church. Pass it. So they say, where are we going here? Uh oh. Now we we be already doing it, Israel. Think about it. When we come on the feast days, what do we do? Do we be all uh, this and that? We ain't talking about the drinking and all that, but do we or do we get fed and then go eat? Because it's getting out of control. We bags on this, 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 and that. We're not listening. We distracted. All type of stuff going on. We're not paying attention. So the Lord say, check this out. Israel ain't paying attention. Supposed to come with the mind to learn. To learn. We got to get ourselves in order. We're getting too comfortable, Israel. That's real. So we can't say we don't do it where to the point uh, uh, when the feast days come, we've been doing it. But with the Sabbath, it's been opened up. My family's been guilty. So that's why I say this before all of us. You understand? And we're going to go to Christ too. So we got to check ourselves and really get in the Word. How are we preparing for the Sabbath? We got to look, really look at ourselves. <laughs> Let the Bible go out. Now watch the people. Now watch us. Watch the people in this book right here called the Bible. <laughs> and see how they got down. And would they get understanding? Mm -hmm. Why? Because they came with the right mindset. Go ahead. At Nehemiah 8 and the third verse. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate, from the morning until midday. From what? From the morning until midday. Now look at that. They ain't coming to hear the word from the morning to the midday. So were they prepared the night before? Yeah. They ready to hear that word from the morning to midday. Because if they weren't prepared, I would be asleep. Out the spirit. <laughs> so we gotta we gotta watch them sleepy demons. Satan is the master distracted. That's why we go out in the streets teaching what usually happens and you see Israel, here brother, listen, and then here come a a girl walk past distraction. 
that quick. That quick. See that? Here, brother's trying to listen, and the children bucking up, being wild, not a brother. Because cause the child is out, out of control. Mm -hmm. He's like, dang, what's going on? So it's all affecting how the word coming out. Now, is it a scripture that say, quench not the spirit? Yep. Yeah. Sometimes we be quenching the spirit, right or wrong. Right. Yeah. So we got we to gotta come with it, Israel. We as a whole, the body of Christ, we come to be edified. That's why we went to Ephesians 4. See? So from morning to even, go ahead, brother. Until midday, midday. Excuse me. No, no problem. Before the men and the women, that those that could understand, and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. See that? So it said the ears of all the people. The ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. Is that powerful? Powerful. Hold that. Go to Luke. We're coming back. Luke 19, 45. Luke the 19th chapter and the 45th verse. It says, And he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, my house is a house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. See, so Christ had zeal for his father's temple. So Christ would come and whip them up out of there. But these Israelites here had changed the purpose of the temple. The purpose of the temple was for Israel to learn and pray. But these guys turned the temple into a place of merchandise. Turned the whole, the whole purpose of the temple around. So Christ corrected them. Go ahead. 47. And he taught daily in the temple. But the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him. And could not find what they might do, do for all the people. Were very attentive to hear him. See that? Sorry. So right there. Priest wanted to kill Christ, shut him down, because he teaching daily in the temple. And they noticed that Israel was very attentive to hear Christ, his words. Now, what spirit was on the scribes and Pharisees? Covetous. Covetous. They had the devil on them. So the devil didn't want these Israelites to hear the words of Christ. See that? So we got to fight Satan. He's a spirit, and we're wrestling against what spirits in high places so we got to be fighting them spirits man why am i tired why am i falling swine but then after this i get a burst of energy what's going wait a minute why this this wait a minute why is my child doing this 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 and that wait a minute you see mm -hmm. can't just let stuff go past us we miss it damn <laughs> no we're here to be vigilant sober Right? All of us. Okay? And attention. Attention. Paying attention. See? Some children like to play games. You know what? I'm going to go use the bathroom 15 times. So what's this? Shut that stuff down. Boom. Now we ain't doing all this stuff. Okay? We're going to stop playing games. So that's us as men running the house and our wives that's together as we get that's happening shut that stuff down okay so let's go back Nehemiah 8 4 and uh yeah we can read water read it you want to read three again or you, you can read four okay Nehemiah 8 and verse 4 and Ezra the scribe stood up on the pulpit of wood, which they had made for the purpose. And beside him stood Mat Mattathiah and Shema she Shema and Ananiah and Urijah and Helkiah and Maasa on his right hand, and on his left Padadiah and Mashael 
and Melchiah and Hashem and Hashbadana, Zechariah and Meshalam. Right. So Ezra will have brothers on his right hand side and his left hand side. Excuse me. Men of wisdom. Go ahead. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. For he was above all the people, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. See, so Israel was on one accord, brother. When Ezra opened up the book of the law, Israel all stood up. They on point. They on point. See? Go ahead. Verse 6. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Also, Jeshua and Benai and Sherebiah and Jetnam, Akab, Shabbatani, Hadahiah, I'm sorry if I messed these up, excuse me, um, Mananiah, Kelatai, Azariah, Jezebat, Hanah, Peleliah, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law and the people stood in their place. Eight. So they read in the book of the law of the Most High distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. So you had Ezra and all of them breaking those scriptures down to the people. Schooling them, breaking it down, reading it, breaking down, get, breaking it down, giving out the sense like how we be doing. And mind you, what was Israel doing? Sitting like how we doing? Standing. They were standing. <laughs> Attentive. With attentive ears. See that? That's powerful. They ready. So you think God gonna feed them? Yeah. And that's just what God was doing. The great God feeding these Israelites. Because he allowed them to come back into the land. The land of Israel. Home. Go ahead. Eight. I mean nine. And Nehemiah, which is the which Tarshat. is the Tarshat. And Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. See that? So the scriptures had the power to hit their spirit. So as they hearing the word and getting understanding, coming out of the Babylonian captivity, they start mourning and weeping. See? So were they eating? Yes. In the context of the word. Spiritually, yeah. But they were Spiritually eating, were they physically eating no, like that? No. No. So from morning all the way up to midday, they stand and they get in the sense. They get sped, man. And it's a feast day. So we've done it. We be doing it. Right? Go ahead. Ten. Then he said unto them, Go your way. Eat the fat and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them, for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our, our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's right, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So Satan will take our joy. That's right. We're not fellowship. We're depressed. We're down and out. That's the time when you really dig in deep. You see? Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Okay, go ahead. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Hold your peace, for the day is holy. Right, it was a high holy day. Go ahead. Neither be ye grieved. And all the people went their way to eat. To do what? To eat. And to drink. And to send portions. And to make great mirth. Because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. See, they understood the words that was declared unto them. How did they get that understanding? First of all, they were attentive. So it's say, ah, we got it. The Lord was blessing. They weren't missing the point. Right. Getting easily distracted. No. Nah, they locked in. You see? Locked in. That was the spirit. These are the examples. You know how you say, okay, what example do we have in the scripture where Israel was doing this so we be safe? Get these examples. Okay, there's an example. Okay, put it in your notes. Got your topic, bam, there's an example right there. This is scripture. You know, Satan be distracting me, man, read this. 
okay, or the Sabbath service before. Let me read over Nehemiah 8. Different things. You meditate on the Word of God. See that? Now let's move up to Christ. When He walked the earth, what went down? How was Israel? We just read earlier that they were attentive to hear Him. Right. So this is Mark 6. Mark 6. Let's get in here. Mark 6. Mm -hmm. And 1. Mark the 6th chapter. Very first verse. And he went out from thence and came into his own country. And his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath drew and the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astounded, saying, So was Israel gathering together in the synagogue on the Sabbath day? Yes. Yes. Even Christ's parents and siblings would be there, because that's a commandment. You see that? So there's another example, Israel, showing us how we're supposed to gather on the Sabbath day. Come together, fellowship, to learn the word of God. Go ahead. It says, from whence had this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hand? See, so he had the people, even his siblings, like, Looking at this brother, the way he would do things and perform powerful works, they would say, where does his wisdom come from that this brother has? It came from the Father, the Most High, who gave his spirit unto Christ. So Christ will always be in the spirit. And he had some cold-blooded hands, man, that he was performing. He would perform mighty works with his hands. See, we'll read about some of that, how Christ will perform mighty works with his hands, his bare hands. Jump down to verse, same chapter, the 30th verse. Mark 6 and 30. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Yahweh Jesus, and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. So what did the apostles go out there and teach? Repentance. Repentance. That's the 12th verse, by the way. In the same book. Same chapter. Go ahead. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. So Christ called his apostles together and said, Look, let's come apart. They was doing a lot of work. So you may rest. Go ahead. But there were many coming and, go and going. And they had a, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. So you had so many Israelites coming and going to them from them to where the, the apostles didn't even have enough time to eat. They had to put in work. <laughs> See? Read on. 32. And they departed into a desert place by, sh by ship privately. And the people saw them departing, and many knew them, and ran afoot the thither out of all cities, and out went them, and came together unto him. See, so these Israelites would beat Christ and the apostles to the space. Before they got there, they already, out of the scriptures say, they out went them. You see? Go ahead. And Yahweh Jesus, when he came out, saw much people, and was moved with compassion toward them, because they were... Because they were as sheep having no shepherds. So they were as sheep having no shepherds. Shepherds. So you know you had Pharisees around, right? But they weren't true shepherds. So Christ seeing the people, the multitude of his people, Israelites, and he said, man, he had compassion on them. Because they, he knew they didn't have true shepherds dealing with them. They had false shepherds, the Pharisees, who would be dealing with them. Go ahead. And he began to teach them many things. And he began to do what? He began to teach them many things. He began to teach them, what did it say? Many things. Many things, meaning Christ would start going over a lot of stuff with them. That's what many things mean, right? A lot of stuff. Feed his people. Go ahead. And when the day was now far spent. And when the what? The day was now far spent. What did it mean the day was far spent? It's almost, it's over. It's almost over. 
Now, all day he teaching them many things. Keep Amen. in mind, Nehemiah 8, we plugging them in now. Even to the morning. Even to midday, he started going many things. The day is far spent. You read about them eating yet? So obviously, what are they doing then? Getting healed and fed wisdom. See that? That's what Christ would do. That's what Christ would do. Go ahead. And it says, His disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is far past. See, and the time, now the time is far past. Go ahead. Send them away, that they may go into the country round about. And into the villages, and by themselves bread. And by themselves what? Bread. Bread, go ahead. For they have nothing to eat. Okay. So you can't say they was up in there while Christ teaching, they grubbing up. No, nah, for that day they getting healed, fed, that wisdom. See? So now, let's read on. And he answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. See, so now Christ is the day far spent. Christ said, all right, y'all go give him something to eat. <laughs> he was proving his disciples. Go ahead. And they say unto him, Shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat? He said unto them, How many loaves have ye? And go see. And when they knew, they say five and two fishes. We got five loaves and two fishes. So they go to show you the disciples walked around. They had food, mm -hmm. right? Because Christ already told them to, you know, rest a while. And they didn't have that much leisure time, not even to eat. Mm -hmm. So they had five loaves and two fishes. Go ahead. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. By hundreds and fifties because of a lot of them. So they sitting down, right? Go ahead. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked upon the heaven and blessed, and break the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided, and the two fishes divided, he among them. See that? Among them all. I'm sorry. And among so, them all. So with five loaves and two fish, Christ's mighty hands, he started just breaking them, breaking it off, and multiplying the bread and the fish. Feeding them now. He already gave them the wisdom. Now he's feeding them. Now they eat. Right or wrong? Right. See? Man, and why this come out? Because of distractions, man. We gotta we gotta watch it and we be missing stuff. We gotta be attentive. The Lord is a jealous power, man. He wants us to hear his word so he can get us out of here. He want us getting caught off there, but if we ain't gonna listen, Israel, we gonna get caught. We gonna get caught. You see? So we gotta we gotta lock it down, Israel. We gotta lock it down, Israel. They see one little thing and it be wrong, they'll take it and it it get out of control. <laughs> but when they see righteousness, righteousness usually it take them time. I'm gonna hold off on that. They see wickedness. Oh, it, it, it's we gonna outdo the thing. That's how we are as a people. <laughs> See, we wait for a, a loophole. Ah, now I could break that commandment. We'll actually say it like that, but we'll look for loopholes. <laughs> but Israel, can I do this? Can I do that? Can we do that? <laughs> so it's a lot, you know, that's been said before. It's a lot the Lord going to show us and teach us. But can we humble ourselves? Can we humble ourselves when it come out? You understand? So read on. Mark 6, 43. Right. And they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments. And they took what? It said verse 42. 42. What happened? Okay, I'm sorry. Mark 6 and 42. And they did all eat and were filled. They all ate and was full. Yeah. See? Go ahead. 43 now. And then they took, and they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments. And of the fishes. So they had 12 baskets, 12 tribes. Leftover. They had leftovers. So let's show you the power of Christ right there, right? He fed these Israelites. They got full and it was leftovers. And he was doing that on the purpose on, on, for a reason. Because he will always be teaching 
Israel, starting with the apostles, the disciples, a lesson. Everything he did was for a lesson, a lesson to be learned. And sometimes they will miss the point. Christ would still deal with them and feed them. And they would eventually get that understanding and rejoice. And they still was getting taught. After Christ ascended, right or wrong. See? Peter was getting taught. <laughs> okay, yeah, I need you to deal with Cornelius. See? <laughs> so we're going to be getting taught. Getting our houses in order until we get out of here. That's a good thing. We want to hear correction. So we want to hear that wisdom. See? It's a beautiful thing, Israel. That's like... That's like you watch a good movie, and I've seen it. I hear the brother all that, and he eat nachos and popcorn. <laughs> he watched the other brother, man, what? He cut all that stuff. See? Why? That movie is good to it, see? <laughs> Needed that this wisdom is supposed to be good to the soul. You want to hear it. You don't want to miss nothing. Because you're thirsty and you're hungry. That's the spirit. That's the spirit. Okay? We want to quench the spirit. So read on, brother, 44. Uh-huh. And they did eat of the loaves, were, and they that did eat of the loaves were about 5,000 men. Were about 5,000 men. Now hold that. Well, we can let that go. Go to Matthew, the same account. Matthew 14. So we're dealing with the mighty hands of Christ. You see that power? Christ had power. Mark 14. The Matthew 14, thank you, brother. And 15. So it's going to give us some more understanding here. Matthew 14 and 15. And when it was evening. And when it was what? And when it was evening. So there you go. Far, the day far spent. I mean, it's sunset, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. His disciples came to him, saying, This is the desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. See, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victual, mean food. That's what the disciples were saying. Go ahead. Matthew 14 and 16. But Yahweh Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give them to eat. Give ye them to eat. Mm -hmm. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. Bring those five loaves and two fishes here to me. Go ahead. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up, on, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. See that? So as he looked, prayed to the Father, blessed the bread and the fish, so again, start multiplying the food. And say, here, he's passing it to the disciples and they taking it to these Israelites. Coming back, getting more. Take it to, coming back, getting more. He just, man, he feeding them. See? It ain't that Christ didn't want them to eat, right? <laughs> He wanted to eat. The thing is, attentive. See? We can go down there at Fifth and Wall and teach. They out there, we want to eat. But see? Listen to the word of God. We want sandwiches. Now. Y'all got any clothes? <laughs> Wait a minute. See? So we had to experience some of that, right? <laughs> see? So these things we talking about are not traditions of men. So we're reading scriptures now. We're reading about our Lord and Savior. And we're reading about when, when people was in the right spirit, they was attentive. So let's continue. And they did all eat and were filled. And he took up the fragments that remained 12 baskets full. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men beside women and children. Look at that. You had 5,000 men, and you had women there learning, and children. Uh, so them children got fed by Christ too, right? Yep. So they was out there also listening. Wait. See that? 
Wasn't that distraction going on? Brother? <laughs> and Christ fed them. That's he, this the parable of where he, or, or should I say, the time he fed 5,000 plus men and women, and children, and women. Right? Families. Go to the 15th chapter. In two, verse 29. Matthew 15 and verse 29. And Yahweh Shire, Jesus departed from thence and came nigh unto the Sea of Galilee and went up into a mountain and sat down there. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame. See, so you had multitudes of Israelites again coming to Christ. And in that multitude, you had brothers and sisters that couldn't walk. They were lame at the feet. Go ahead. Those that were lame, blind. And blind. You had Israelites that couldn't see. Go ahead. Dumb. What do you mean dumb? Couldn't speak. They speak. couldn't talk. Go ahead. Maimed. Maimed. Missing limbs and all this other stuff, right? Go ahead. And many others. And cast them down at Yahweh or Jesus' feet. And he healed them. And he healed them. See, he healed them with his hands. See that? Go ahead. Insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak and maimed to behold, the lame to walk, and the blind to see. So it will go to show you right there as the other Israelites that's there that brought the lame, the maimed, and all that, they would see, okay, wait a minute, this brother and sister didn't have a limb. They got limbs now that was once missing. These lame brothers and sisters that couldn't walk, they walking now. This brother and sister that couldn't see, they can see clearly now. See that? All praises. Go ahead. And it says, and they glorified the most high God of Israel. And the people, that's what it's talking about, glorified the God of who? Of Israel. Israel. The God of Israel. So as Christ was performing these mighty works, he was doing it to glorify his father. And then Israel would be like, that's the God of Israel working for this brother. See? That was the real talk, man. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 32. Matthew 15 and verse 32. Then Jesus or Yahweh called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. Now look at that. Is this the same account? Yep. You sure? No. There's a whole nother count, account we're going to get into. Now these Israelites was rolling with them for three days, and then his Christ said, What? I have mm -hmm. compassion. They have nothing to eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that powerful right there? There. Go ahead. Alright. And it says, And I will not send them away fasting. And I will not send them away what? Fasting. Fasting. What does that mean? No food. Yeah, they didn't eat or drink during that whole three day period. See? So, Christ. Go ahead. Lest they faint in the way. And his disciples say unto him, When should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill such so great a multitude? Y'all caught that? Yeah. What's the point? So the disciples So the disciples are saying, okay, we got all these people, but we don't have the substance to be able to provide to Follow your charge to feed them. So what that show you at one point in time how the disciples got down? They lacked faith. Because what did he do before their eyes the first time? He, multi he multiplied the fish and the bread. Now, yes. what we're making them to say that statement now, we can't, how are we going to feed them? They just missed the point. They missed it. <laughs> okay. Or they wouldn't even said that. So that go to show you even ourselves could be missing the point. Say, man, wait a minute. <laughs> Christ bringing this out and we not understanding it. That's how it happens a lot of times. See? So let's read on. Verse 34. And Yahweh Shire, Jesus said unto them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven. See, seven loaves this time. And a few little fishes. And a few little fishes. See that? So they totally forgot about the miracle that was just performed with the 5,000. Because they, it's, just, it's a scripture also say that their hearts was hardened. 
I mean, they were shut down. <laughs> See, go ahead. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and the fishes and gave thanks and break it and gave to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets full. See, and I got seven baskets of leftovers. Go ahead. And they that did eat were 4,000 men beside women and children. Bingo. So was that a different account? Yes. So at one time, Christ fed 5,000 plus men or women and children. Another time, he, felt he fed 4,000 plus women and children. But if you see, Christ will be teaching them first, right? right? And then he will feed them. See? So these scriptures go out so we can eliminate these, by these distractions, Israel. We can maintain focus and learn. Okay? That's what, that's what the Sabbath service is about. Us coming together and learning. Serving the Lord. Right? Come back. Repentance. We get fed. So we won't get caught up in devil doctrines. That's what's out there waiting for us, devil doctrines. We got to know how to shut them down. You see? Even the children. See, they going, they said, look, we're going to the place of learning. Mm -hmm. We're going up there to learn. This is, the, this is what it's about. You see? Just like we sent them to school. And that teacher, and they all that up in there, they teaching. You know that teacher ain't having what be going out here up in there. That's right. And we read about Christ. <laughs> See? That child going up in there and, and sleeping all the time, you getting a phone call. And a letter. And a letter. <laughs> Something wrong with the child. What's going on with the... They, they getting a phone call. Straight up. You See? So we got to dig in deep, Israel, and say, what are we doing? But we be getting too comfortable. And this is how these children be playing, be disrespecting the parents and all this other stuff. Lord say, look, I got to shut this stuff down. He's giving us the tools to do it. You see? So let's go to the 16th chapter. 16, Matthew 16 and 5. Matthew 16, fifth verse. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Now they forgot to take bread. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> then Yahweh Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. So Christ gave the disciples a warning. Watch out for the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now watch the disciples. <laughs> Go ahead. And they reason among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. See? So that's their reasoning. He's saying this because we didn't take bread with us. <laughs> Go ahead. Which when Yahweh Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves? Because you have brought no bread. They go to show you Christ would know all things. He knew what they were talking about. He knew how they was reasoning. He said, listen, oh, you a little faith. Why would you say what you said that, with that question? Because you have, we have, we, ye have brought no bread. Go ahead. Do you not yet understand? Do you not still understand? Neither remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets he took up. See, y'all don't remember that? When I fed the 5,000 and how many baskets or leftovers you took up? They forgot about that. <laughs> See what be happening? Do we be forget sometimes what, what, what goes out, what went out? Yep. We get lost in the sauce. Hey, there sure. was a class. <laughs> Guilty. Christ is saying that, yeah. We all be speaking, forgetting. Go ahead. And it says in verse 10, Neither the seven loaves of the 4,000. Two accounts. Go ahead. 
and how many baskets he took up? How is it that you do not understand that I, that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that you should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. See that, Israel? So that be the point. The word go out so that the body of Christ may be edified. But we're not getting caught up with every wind of doctrine. You see? So we want to put it out there where be on guard for Satan. Because Satan will try to work his way in any over any type of way to distract us, get us caught up. We're no longer paying attention. Can't sit still. We out of control. We be missing things, missing the point, getting upset for no apparent reasons. Them be spirits. These be those be spirits. We supposed to be paying attention, getting the understanding. Then we'll recognize them spirits that be on us and we'll be rising up saying foolish stuff, man. Want to be somebody, a pat on the back. No, we're here to learn. That's the key. We're here to be edified. And that's why men with the wrong spirit on them, we don't have to deal with y'all. Mm -hmm. Saying all these negative things, you don't have to get together and all that. See, that's the spirit right there that's, that's want to cause people to fall away. You see? They don't see that they was getting edified. Because the whole time they're missing the point. But yet they quick, let them go run in the water and get baptized. Come out, and here we go. Covetous men, murmuring, got bad attitudes. That's what the water and all that symbolizes? <laughs> no. That's what I'm saying. We, we got we to gotta get it in order. And what be happening in the church a lot of times to go at the home. See? Say, all right, wait a minute. We ain't paying attention. You start asking them questions. Where, that, where, where we at? Sometimes we're like, what scripture are we in? What chapter are we in? Uh, you and Mark, Matthew? You ain't, you ain't following along. <laughs> See, you done drifted. Then you start saying where the children, where they at? <laughs> where the mind frame is. But then they don't drift when it comes to the games and the things they like, do they? Nope. Or the movies they like, they ain't drifting. They showing you right there. But some way, somehow, sleepy mode. Drifting. <laughs> See? Because that's where it goes in, okay, they need more training. That's all that is. Okay. Gotta get better at this. It's called parenting and wisdom raining down skill, man. That's another class. So we all need to learn parenting skills. Mm -hmm. That comes from above. But well, we think we got it, and it's all good. And they say, I know, I know, I know. Every time the word going you being shown, so I know, I that's pride. That's that element of pride there. I know, I know. We gotta be careful, Israel. Got to be careful. Look at these scriptures. Analyze them. It's be like, so we can't. Listen. What, what should we be thinking about? Paying attention. <laughs> Listening. Get that wisdom, man. Lord giving it to us freely. Free. Be that sponge. Because again, you be seeing them do that in these religions? And they learn devil doctrines and king. See, because that's the wickedness. We'll soak that up. Righteousness go out. See? <laughs> that's the real talk. That's the real talk. So the Lord been showing us this, you know. So when these things don't go, go out just because we make something up, Israel. This is real. We it, it, just not out here. Brothers and sisters be on them conference calls. A lot of them could be sleeping. The brother there listening. The woman ain't they don't try to get on the conference. Hear nothing. Children ain't trying to hear nothing. <laughs> See? 
That's why it's beautiful you hear a child say, yeah, I'm taking notes. Getting school. School. That's right. That's the spirit. See? Don't even know the class going out on the Sabbath. That's how you know we be doing the right thing because it's spiritual, man. But we carnal, that we're going to start stumbling. Watch. These are things the Lord said, okay, put them on the hit list. They don't like studying anyway. He, don't, he or she don't like listening. Put them on the hit list. They on their way. Have you not been doing that? That's why we supposed to be trembling at the word, man. Trembling at the word. Brothers come in and come out. Come and go as they please. Right. Sleep. Quote scriptures. Hands out. <laughs> like, come on, man. Ready to teach. Yeah, that precept go with this. No, it don't. Wrong precept. Wrong script. It's, 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 that's, not, that's one that's, that's not discipline there. That's not the Holy Spirit of discipline, right? See? So that's the key. When we can be attentive, willing to learn, the Lord will keep blessing all of us with wisdom. But he wants his bride. Then he's going to get his bride. So you remember that, how Christ is dealing with his bride. You see, attentive, like you at home dealing with your rib. You dealing with your rib, teaching, and she all in your face, smacking it. Hold on. <laughs> We've been great going into that word, right? See, no, okay, it's, it's serious. So that would be the thing. That's what Christ is talking about, is what we're learning. We're learning. Go to, uh, back to Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. And we had 12, right? Mm -hmm. What's the, yeah, we'll read 12 again. Ephesians 4 and 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of the Most High unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of of the fullness of Christ. See that? So the Lord wants us to be unified as the saints. He wants his saints to grow <laughs> and learn about the Son of God. That's Yahweh You see? So the Lord got it set up where there's teachers to teach the saints the wisdom. And, then, and therefore, once from that, the, the, the saints is getting that wisdom and being happy and being filled with joy, filled with the word. They listening. So like I said, a good listener will be a good teacher, right? right. But if we can't listen, but we scream, I'm a teacher, we got it backwards. <laughs> if we fill with that pride, then it ain't, what wisdom is entering in our soul? So we got to watch it. See young brothers rising up telling men what to do. Y'all need to do this. You have a seat, brother. Okay? Learn. <laughs> Pride. That quick. <laughs> Learn. That's what it's about. Learning. Learning. It's always about that. You see? Even when we counsel, yeah, here, brother. Listen. The old experience, man. Listen. They come and tell you what to do. That's out of order, brother. Many men wanted that power over Israel. And once they got that power, they was giving Israel bad advice. Right. Tell them anything. And then, pew, I'm out of here. They're wicked, not us. They leave us jacked up. So these men didn't really care for the sheep. They wanted glory. Vain glory and power. Do you know where I come from? One West. This, okay, where is it now? It's foolishness, man. Idolatry. <laughs> it's foolishness. You see? And that's what, that's that leaven. And then you got sisters, they like men of power. I'm going at you. Nah. I'm supposed to be here for Christ. <laughs> Straight up. 
be having the wrong mind, be connected to the wrong people. Ecclesiastes 6, tell us what to do. I don't want to do that. Okay. Keep having these problems. <laughs> because we're self-willed. We're doing other things, Israel. There's no I'm being secret at home. It's going to come out in the church. These brothers and sisters don't know what I'm doing. Lord, know what you're doing. You see? So this is real. Continue, brother. Ephesians 4 and 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to the sea. You see that, Israel? So the Lord wants his church, the body of Christ, to be edified so we won't be winning with the wind, going out to other gods and to different doctrines. So should the saints or the children of Israel, should they have summits and say, you hear, it's not a we brother, we Israel, put the doctrines to the side. Wait a minute. What do you mean put the doctrines to the side? Not Christ's doctrine. <laughs> There's other doctrine that needs to be put to the side and kicked out and got out rid of. The saints, from what we're hearing in the word, is they supposed to be dealing with what? One what? Doctrine. One doctrine. United. Being united in that one doctrine, right or wrong. Then we read the word saints. Yep. Edifying. Mm -hmm. That we be not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Mm -hmm. So that's why we gather together and get be attentive. And then you hear, okay, this was being taught, Israel. Watch out for this doctrine. Watch out for that, sister. Watch out for this. Because you got watchmen watching out for the soul. So then you'll hear, oh, that's what's being taught. Yeah, be on guard. Just like Christ knew about Korban. He knew the Pharisees was push, pushing that stuff. Corban ain't even in the law. <laughs> Israel was caught up in that. See? So that's why we're supposed to be here king. And you want your children on that king because they're ready to go after Santa who don't exist. The Easter Bunny. <laughs> and everything else out there. Ready to throw on that costume and go knock on strangers' doors and say, trick or treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat. <laughs> <laughs> See, we were there, and then the parents down with that. How are you down with all this, this, the devil? They question the Bible, but they don't question Halloween. Let the children do what they want. You want to celebrate that? Go right ahead. I'll take you to hell. <laughs> are you serious? That's not right for the child. The child's supposed to be learning. They need guidance. And you destroying them as a guide. Mm. That's like you the driver at Universal Studios. Hop on the tour bus. I'm going to drive y'all right off this cliff, though. <laughs> Everybody hopping on. That's not a cool guy, a guy right there, but it's <laughs> destroying people. Look at the scriptures, Israel. See the purpose. This is about us learning. Get edified, being aware of them doctrines, that we may be safe. There's no cares. I don't want it. It's the wrong spirit. Your people is out there. Our people is suffering. They lack understanding. You see? Up in here, we're suffering. We're lacking understanding. We're supposed to be here to grow. That's the purpose. And learn. So we won't be tossed by every wind of doctrine. What the scriptures say, and uh, brother has some scriptures in Ecclesiasticus. Let us get that. Ecclesia uh, Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Five and nine. Ecclesiasticus, fifth chapter, ninth verse. It says, Winnow not with every wind, and go not into every way. Look at that. 
What would this go with, Israel? What would what we just left in Ephesians? That's right. So what does it mean, window not with every win? What is the win window? Win now. Window. Window. The window in, in ancient Israel would be like a tool you use to sift wheat. So mm -hmm. you would throw it in the air. So the scriptures say, window not with every win. Don't just be going with every single win. In this context, every single doctrine. That's right. That's right. So you got camp hoppers, church hoppers out there? Yes. Winnowing. That's right. What this summit is about. You got men with different doctrines. Let's go over there. I like that. Yeah, well, this, this, these brothers got a piece. I like that. Well, these brothers are good in martial arts. They're going to be the ones that, that protect the first, you know, protect the people. <laughs> they got the spirit. They know how to fight. He's the one with the staffs, aggressive. Put them on the front line. You serious? Then you got the, the men on top. <laughs> Elders and all this other stuff. And different councils and all and, and, and Teaching wrong doctrines. In Israel, going for it. Because we that type of people. That's why the Lord wants us to listen, Israel. That's what he's telling our nation. That's what he's telling us. I want you to listen. Be attentive. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows we are drift. A lot of times we didn't miss points, right? Yeah. And then we got caught in the stuff. Damn, how did I get involved in this? Wasn't listening. What happened? Satan was bringing distraction. And Satan knew who to go after and go and get. Because we was playing games and we got put out there. And that's all that it was called exposure. I say, wait a minute, got you. And then the mercies was there. Don't do this again, because we could be gone. We got to repent, Israel. Got to really repent. Say, you know what? The Lord loved me. That's how we supposed to be thinking. The Lord loved me to be showing this to me. This is His mercies. People out there left still angry. Some of them need know why they left. They'll make up stuff. <laughs> See? Until they become the truth. Yeah. Lie to themselves. Destroying their homes. Some of the children be so uh, 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 worried. They, don't know. they be like, I don't even know if I'm going to see y'all again. They'll even say that. I don't know if I'm coming and going. Because they've been pulled in different directions. For a child, brother, to go through that. <laughs> See? How does this happen? Different doctrines. Coming up here early, they got on the bus this goddess with three faces. Buddhism. <laughs> oh, that's the Trinity. I said, God, leave. Are we involved in that? Buddhism and all this other stuff? Yep. Yeah. Yoga? Yeah. Meditation? <laughs> Witchcraft? Yeah. Astrology? Yeah. See? Missing the point. Children coming up with their own gospel. Hmm. It's the Sabbath day. It's not hard. What are we supposed to be doing on the Sabbath? Together. Thank you. Case closed. You forgot that commandment? Yeah. No, I'm keeping God's commandments. Don't lie to yourself. See? It happens. It happens, Israel. Continue. It says, Win or not with every win, and go not into every way. And go not into every way. It's only one way. That's Christ. Go ahead. For so doth the sinner that hath a double tongue. See that? So a sinner that has a double tongue, it tell you about them. Speak to you one way, and on the other, whole another person. Yeah. Live a whole another life. Play church, go out, be a whole another person. That's what happened with the children. In the parents' face, up in here, oh yeah, shalom, this, that. Go to school, go do all this. A whole different person. Damien, come in the face. Oh, goody two shoot. Quit it. Quit it. I got children. Quit it. <laughs> Quit
quit it. But like we like I tell them, what they go through is say, look, they like we losing friends. Say we pray. You see? But we all supposed to be friends under one doctrine, Israel. We all supposed to be learning the same thing. Man, one mind, one judgment. That's what the scriptures say, right? First right. Corinthians, one, one and ten. ten. Be on the same page, same program. So when others come in, they already know. They're gonna go off what they see. Okay, these brothers and sisters move like that in Christ. And they're gonna learn. But we all carefree and just loosey goosey, they're gonna fall right in there and be loosey goosey. Kind of show them be an example, Israel. Look, this is about what Christ is teaching. See? This is a place to learn. We already given them flyers. Come learn. We we got to learn. That's what it's about. Read that next part. Verse ten. Please ask us five and ten. Be steadfast in thy understanding. What does that mean? Be rooted, grounded in the understanding. Firm in what you believe. Be firm. That's steadfast in your understanding. Understanding is coming out. You read, okay, wisdom is the principal thing. What are thy getting? You understand. Be understanding. Be attentive. That's words always in Proverbs. Attend to no wisdom. You read words like that because it's saying, listen, hear your father and attend unto my words. See, so the father would always teach and say, and when he's teaching them, listen. Listen. Don't be drifting, son, or daughter, you drifting. Listen. <laughs> That's right. Then the mother come in be the same way, because she's giving that authority, telling the children. So listen. You paying attention? Huh? Look. That ain't right, is it? No. See that? So we're supposed to be rooted in our understanding. Read it again. Be steadfast in thy understanding. No, I watch a video. Right, that, that sounds good. Yeah, they got a point there. No, they don't. <laughs> they bring the devil doctrine out, try to slide it in there to you. Don't bite for that stuff. Be steadfast in thy understanding. Go ahead. And let thy word be the same. And let thy word be the same. We ain't supposed to be double talking. See? <laughs> you talking about apostles doctrine, then that's what it is. See? It's, it's, it's crazy. Go ahead, brother. Be swift to hear. Be what? Swift to hear. What does that mean? That's basic. Quick to listen. There you go. That's the class. We swift to speak. Quick to rap. <laughs> Be swift to hear. Things go on quickly. We already coming. Right? This, 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 and that. Instead of, you know what? Let me swift to hear. Let me hear the facts. Let me get understanding first, because... These are my brothers and sisters. What happened? What's going on? We already come to the conclusion. Yeah, that's the brother. That's the sister. Yeah, they doing this, and we roll quick on a person. Be swift to hear, Israel. That's for all of us. See? Let's go with Ecclesiastes 11. Go ahead. And let thy life be sincere. And let thy life be sincere. Should we be true to ourselves? Or phony. True. Genuine. Genuine. Got a lot of our brothers and sisters in Cali, man, be fake out here. You come from a certain place, you be like, man, they about the hour. Fashion show out here. Putting on a show. Genuine for a lot of them. You be like, this is the caddy. Bougie, what they say. They say bougie and all that. I can't eat that. I can't eat that. Sit down and eat. <laughs> Fake and phony, man. Fake and phony. Shalom. <laughs> hey, brother. 
Let thy light be sincere, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, bro. And with patience, give answer. And what? And with patience, give answer. See? So should we think things through? Yes. We go with that tongue, rash in our tongue. Wait a minute, let me think about what's coming before I say something. Let me zip it. That's why we say zip it. Not we, they be mean. <laughs> no, it's the scriptures. Because can this member get us in trouble? Yep. Yes. And we do a lot of talking, man. And we do a lot of showing face to some brother, then another brother is whole and that's different ball game. Yep. So now the other brother don't know how the brother get down. He get confused, like what? Now ain't how it went down. He's showing you one side, but the other side, you know, is a whole nother ball game. Right. See? You wouldn't know that a brother really never even liked you anyway. <laughs> You come with them scriptures, cold cutter. I don't like you. It's a spirit. Straight up. Talking about brothers out of town. Well, yeah, you know what? You know how brothers is. They get too strict. You know, just being a stickler in the word. Hold on, nah. nah. That brother be bringing out that word, but see, other brothers don't know that be happening because they'll put on a whole nother face to that brother or that sister. I've seen it. Many of y'all seen it. Flim flams in Israel. <laughs> you see? So let's be patient, Israel. Lord, this is his program. Always remember that. And he's teaching us. We're not teaching him. He's teaching us. Remember that. We come focused. That's what's going to help us learn. And then he'll bless us with different things. You see, we think we suppose I supposed to have it. Says who? Says who? See, no more Romans six and sorry, Romans six, sixteen. Sorry, Romans sixteen. So this other, uh, this the Lord, this truth is spiritual. Romans sixteen and one. To seven. I commend unto you, Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Sincrea. Sincrea. Thank you. So, with sisters in the church, the yeah. body? Yes. This sister was named Phoebe. That you receive her in the Lord as becoming saints, and that you assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. For she has been a, a secure. What does a secure mean? A support. Support. support a aid. Comfort. A comfort. So this is the type of sister being in the church, assisted, helping out Israel. Beautiful sister right there. She was a support. See that? A true servant of the Lord. Go ahead. But she has been a secure of many and of myself also. So did she help out Paul? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So this sister was supporting the truth, man. She was there, beautiful spirit, looking out. Got sisters like that, that's in Israel, in the Apostles' Doctrine. They are supportive, they look out, they love their people, they're about the Apostles' Doctrine, they're married, all praises. You see? They try their best to keep themselves out of trouble. Now Israel's garbage and mishaps, Israel try to throw the drama on you, get you caught up in foolishness. Nah. <laughs> nah, we want to stay away from all that gossip. Go ahead. Three. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. See, remember Priscilla and Aquila, it was a married couple. Right. They the ones that went and dealt with Apollos. Right. Paul said they ain't helpers. All praises. Go ahead. Who have for my life laid down their own necks. Unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. That's all the churches of what you would call the uncircumcision. Who was deemed Gentiles, but they're Israelites. Go ahead. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Epitus. Eponidas. Eponidas, thank you. 
who is the fruit, the first fruits of Achaia, 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 Achaia unto Christ. Greet Mary, mm. who bestowed much labor on us. Another sister. Salute Adronicus and Juna. Junia. Junia, my kinsmen. Now these are two brothers right here. He said, my kinsmen. Junia and Adronicus. Go ahead. My kinsmen and my and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles who also were in Christ before me. Wait a minute. So these two were in Christ before Paul? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but Paul's an apostle. How'd that happen? The Lord. Okay. It's a wrap. So that go to show you the Lord is picking and choosing who fits where, right? Yep. What spot, what we're doing, just like the Lord put eyelashes on you and I. The eyelash ain't supposed to be talking junk against the mouth. The eyelash got a special part, right? Without eyelashes, you're in trouble. <laughs> right or wrong? Right. So you got to look at your body and think. Look at the smallest member, and it's very important, special. It's a part of the body. And it functions on that body. That body goes to the kingdom, right? Every member is going. See? So we make up the body of Christ. We humble down, learn. We're on our way. We're on our way. We're here to glorify the Most High Christ. Not us get the glory. See? The Lord have us doing our parts. Deal with that. And then when more, the Lord want more, the Spirit going to show that. That's it. But we don't, what we don't want to do, brothers and sisters, it be a problem. And be making it worse. And we find ourselves caught into each situation, different troubling situation where everybody up in here. I remember a brother said, in front of the congregation, I got into it with all y'all up in here. Like, that's a good thing. That's a good thing? No. You didn't got it to where everybody the dogs in here? Come on. How many times we've seen the Lord do shuffling? Plenty. It don't be playing, man. It's the Holy Spirit, Israel. Things take time. So time will tell. That's how it goes. Right, so you know, it, it's funny. It's the spirit. You look at these brothers that was in before Christ, before that was in before in Christ before before Paul, and the Lord had them doing what? The business of the Lord. He had them helping. He had them helping. See. And we gotta understand where we came from. We've had situations like that here before, right? Yeah. Brothers that's been around since 86, 87, but thought they should be where? Teachers. Teachers. On council, trying their way in, see? And we gotta understand, like the brother brought out through the spirit, whether you here before or after, what did Christ say at the end? Everybody gonna get what? That one penny. That one penny. We all going to the same kingdom. Go back to Ephesians 4. We've had brothers in here in the past. See? What the scriptures call or what what they, what they what is what's called ambition. See, I've been around longer than all y'all brothers, and felt like they couldn't be told that what to do. Can't tell me nothing. I've been around. Most high don't deal with length of years. See, what kind of spirit did Derek, David, and Cora have on? Them? They had a spirit of unbelief, a covetous spirit. Thank you. They said, Moses, everybody holy. You ain't the only one around here that knows something. You're taking too much upon you. 
Moses said, man, it wasn't enough that the Most High separated y'all and y'all brothers to be a part of the priesthood. To make him special unto yourself, you take too much upon you. So when you go back to Ephesians 4 and 11, it says, somebody just read that for me. It says that he gave, he gave some. Read that again. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So that's, and I like the way you read that. It says who? He. The most high. Christ gave this. Some, some apostles and some prophets. Some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says for the perfecting of the saints. And then it says for the edifying of the body of Christ. So all those things that those spirits that Christ gave out, they were for the perfecting of the body. So when you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Verse 4. 1 Corinthians 12 and 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. So what is he saying? There's different gifts in the body of Christ, but all those gifts function off of the same Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. Right. Go ahead. And there are differences of administrations. But the same Lord. See? Different gifts, different positions, but the same Lord. Go ahead. And there are diversities of operations. But it is the same power, the same God, which worketh all in all. So, what word keep coming up? Same. 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 Because the Spirit of the Most High is united. Go ahead. But the manifestation of what? the Spirit. Wait, read that again? But... The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So what is that telling us? The Holy Spirit is manifested to help the church grow, to profit with all, to be profitable unto every brother and sister that comes to learn. That Spirit has been manifested to profit us, so to help us grow in that unity of Christ. like So the Spirit has been manifested where? In the church. In the body of Christ. It says, but the Spirit, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every who? Man. Every man. To what? Prophet. With all. We got to understand, what the Most High does with the Holy Spirit, He gives us things. Whatever we're doing is to do what? Prophet. It's, it's profit. That's what we got to understand. The Lord has given us things, and when He gives it to us, guess what? What happens? It's profitable. It's going to be. It's going to be successful. Successful. It's going to be profitable for the body of Christ. That's what we got to understand. Go to Romans chapter twelve. And this is the mind frame all of us has to have. When Moses was given those uh, instructions by Jethro in Exodus chapter 18. Right? Right. He told Moses to do that. Why? So he wouldn't wear himself out. Right? What else? Think about it. So he can endure, and all the people shall also go into the place of peace. Say it again. Prophet. It was to prophet Moses. 
and the prophet Israel. Was it profitable for Moses to be, and for Israel, for Moses to be standing before Israel day and night? No. No. Jethro told him what? You need help. You need help, dude. You're going to wear yourself thin. You're going to wear yourself out, Moses. That's why it says in verse 22, I'm reading at the bottom. I'll read the thing. It says, And let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter shall excuse, but every small matter they shall judge. It says what? So shall it be easier for thyself. And they shall bear the burden with thee. See? He was telling Moses, man, look, do this thing is gonna make it easier on yourself and it's gonna help bear the burden. These brothers that's gonna help you, they're gonna help bear this burden with you. So when we go back to Romans chapter 12, Paul writing the same thing that he wrote to the church in Ephesus, that he wrote to the church in Corinth. He's writing to the same thing to the church in Rome. Verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as the Most High hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So every man has what? A measure of faith. We all got the spirit of the Most High in Christ in us. Go ahead. Whereas we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ, and everyone members one of another. So we all got different positions but we all are part of what the body of Christ the body of Christ you had men in here in the past that thought what you know what they was above brothers and that's how they exalted themselves and when they didn't get their way what happened leave they ended up leaving that's what we got to understand go ahead six verse say having been gifts Differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. So what is Paul saying in a nutshell? Operate within your measure of the spirit. Exactly. Whatever the Most High is giving unto us, deal with that. And the spirit will open it up because the, the, manifestation, of, the manifestation of the spirit is to profit with all. It's to benefit everybody. Deal with that. And the Lord will deal with us. He'll help. See? Go to... Uh, Let's show that. Go to Romans chapter, uh, Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6, start at verse 1. Acts chapter 6, verse 1. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. So, you had an issue. The issue was what? The widows in the body of Christ that were considered uncircumcision were being neglected in the daily ministration and it caused evil speaking to right. start happening. Murder. Yeah, yeah that daily ministration being neglected. Go ahead. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. So the disciples had another job. They couldn't lead the word of God and start dealing with this issue. So go ahead. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men 
of honest report, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, who we may appoint over this business. So when it came to the appointment, they wanted them appointed to according to what? The Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to men to profit with all. Go ahead. For verse say, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. A what? A man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. And Philip and Prochorus and Nicanor and Timon and Permenius and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. See? So the Spirit had manifested who these brothers was that was going to be over this responsibility. Right? Right. And guess what? Because it was of the Spirit, what did it do for the church? The prophet, the, the prophet. whole saying pleased the multitude. The whole saying pleased the multitude. It will profit the body of Christ. That's what we're in here for. To profit this thing. Everybody's here to profit. Each and every last one of the brothers and the sisters that's in this body has been given the spirit of the Most High to what? Profit with all. To profit this body. Because we all need help. Didn't Christ have 12 disciples? Yeah. So it's showing. Even though Christ could do all things, he still had a team with him to help him out. And that continued and furthered the process. See? This thing is going to have to be of the Holy Spirit. Go to 1 Thessalonians. Because we got to continue to, what they call, evolve. We got to continue to grow. We got to continue to change. Because as we change, as brothers and sisters change, we continue to grow in the body of Christ. Because like the brother said, we're giving our flyers, right? Right. We've done that in the past. Brothers, remember we used to have 60 just men in here. But if we're not changing, if we're not evolving, growing. we're not growing. And when Israel come in here, what they gonna see? Stagnatism. Division. They're not gonna see Christ. That's what we got to understand. The environment and the culture has to be elevated. It has to change. When you look at the church, the church continued to do what? Grow. Grow, even though it had issues. Right. How did we get the Bible? How did we get the gospel? It grew. It grew. You got to understand that. The church is made up of who? Members. Repenting. Many members. The repentant brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel. It's made up of brothers and sisters. This is just walls. This is just a building. Mm -hmm. It's made up of brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. We come together, and that's what that Holy Spirit is. So when we read 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, we grow in because when Israel come, up, come among us, They're going to they gonna see Christ, and it's going to benefit them. We don't want to invite brothers and sisters into a hazardous environment. We've been in this, those environments before. They any, they any fun? No. You want to be around that? No. Nah. Who wants to be in a toxic environment? Nobody. Nobody in their right mind. I don't want to bring my kids around. Be like, please, take me to the good deacon's house. Israel, they coming off the streets to receive help. See? They got enough hurt out there in that world. They got enough division. They got enough hatred. 
They come in here to be loved. To be taught love and to be edified and shown love by brothers and sisters. Yep. That proclaim, and I say that word, proclaim to have the Spirit of Christ dwelling in them. Because we have brothers and sisters in the past that said they had Christ. And was bringing straight the devil. So read verse 5. Look at the effect that we can have amongst one another when we're dealing right. First Thessalonians verse chapter 1 verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit. It says in what? And in the Holy Spirit. And in the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. And in much assurance. So these brothers was assured themselves. Paul's telling them. Go ahead. As ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. So what is he telling them at that last part? They knew the people, the Thessalonians knew what manner or what behavior or conversation Paul would have among them. They, they knew the brother. They knew what kind of how he got down. They knew his mannerism. They seen how he got down. They seen how he dealt. Continue. Sixth verse. And he became followers of us. Became followers of who? Of us. Of us. So when Israel's coming into the body of Christ, they're coming to learn of Christ. But whose example they're going to be following? Those that's in front of them. The ones that's in front of them. Where Christ at? At the right hand of the most high. Yeah, he ain't going to walk through that door. Come down with his cape. Look at me. We're going to be following him everywhere around Culver City? Nah. They coming to see, you know what? I'm lost. Brothers and sisters, they say they got Christ. I need some guidance. Guide me into the light. The spirit that's on brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit of Christ that's on them is going to help them come out of darkness and guide them into the light. That's why it says, and ye became followers of us. Go ahead. And of the Lord. And of the who? And of the Lord. They have excluded Christ. Go ahead. Having received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. Continue. So that you were ensembles to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. So what is that telling us? As they would follow the example of Paul and Christ. Exactly. Follow the Lord. Through that, they, be, they themselves profited through the Spirit. They became examples to others in the faith. See how that works? Particularly Macedonia and Achaia. See how that spreads? Brothers and sisters come and learn. They might not even be in this state, in this city. They might be in another city somewhere. But because of the effect that Paul and them had on the church in Thessalonica, and them learning of Paul and learning of the mannerisms and learning and getting edified of the gospel of Christ through them, when they left, it stuck with them, and now they were able in turn to affect other people. See? So you don't take for granted the example that we set forth. Don't take for granted the spirit of the Most High that he puts upon brothers and sisters and how it can have either a positive or a negative effect on brothers and sisters. When we had our jobs, when we out there in that world, when they come in here, they're supposed to see who? Crowd shot. They're supposed to see Christ. They had such an effect on them brothers that they took that example lived in it and now they can go and affect other people it's not it's going to tell us it's more go ahead a verse for from you sounded out the word of the lord not only in macedonia and achaia so was it only macedonia and achaia no continue but also in every place your faith to god war is spread abroad see how they was walking and how they was living read so that we need not just speak anything. See, they're like, we ain't got to say nothing about y'all. We know how y'all get down because everybody else talking about it. Go ahead. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to the Most High from idols to serve the living and true God. What is that telling us? For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. What is Paul writing to the Thessalonians? 
those brothers and sisters who saw the other the brothers and sisters examples it was a, it was it was a manifestation of how Paul dealt with them and they behavior and turn it from idols uh, to serve the living God. So Paul said, for they themselves show of us, meaning Paul and the apostles, what manner of entering we had unto you. So what is he saying right there? How it's a it's a reflection on Paul and them how they was getting down now. How how those brothers was getting down in the different places abroad, the Kaya and all that. They themselves show of us what manner of entry in we had onto you. They show how effect how effective we were onto y'all brothers and sisters. They were proof in the pudding. Say it again? The impact. The impact that we had on y'all. They showing it now. What impact we had among y'all. What, what manner of entry in we had onto you. And how the impact that Paul and them had on the, onto them, what it allowed them to do. Turn. Repent. What did it say? It say, 